This is the first video in my do-it-yourself mini foundry series. This video is about refractory cement. Refractory cement is needed to build and seal my do-it-yourself mini foundry furnace that this video series is about. There are, of course, two ways to get refractory cement. You could buy it, or you can actually make it yourself fairly easily. It can usually be purchased from your local home improvement store or a uh, specialty uh, wood stove type uh, store. However, it's usually available in uh, 5 pound, 10 pound or even bigger containers and as you may not need that much to some people, making your own might be an interesting alternative. On the left here, I'm showing uh, professional purchased uh, high temp stove and furnace cement, which is refractory cement. The uh, top smaller container is a five pound container, which is the smallest I can source locally. The lower container is uh, a more common 10-pound uh, container. Let's take a closer look at uh, these purchased products. Here's a look at the first one I bought. It uh, weighs about 5 pounds. It says it uh, resists temperatures up to 1,482 degrees Celsius, which is 2,700 Fahrenheit. Obviously, this is going to be uh, adequate for a mini foundry that needs to be able to melt aluminum, uh, brass, and copper. This is a look at the lower container. It's actually a slightly uh, better grade of uh, refractory cement. This one is good to 1650 degrees Celsius or 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously uh, perfectly adequate for what we're trying to do. To make your own do-it-yourself refractory cement you're going to have to come up with two components. On the left I have some Johnson's baby powder now, you need to make sure that your baby powder, when you buy it for this purpose, lists talc as the main ingredient. There's a second type of baby powder that's available that's based on starch. This would be uh, utterly useless for making refractory cement, so make sure you read the label on the baby powder, it needs to contain talc, not starch. On the right, we have a bottle of potassium silicate. You can also use sodium silicate, which uh, you could make yourself from silica gel packs and sodium hydroxide. There's some videos on YouTube about how to easily make your own sodium silicate from those two materials. I was able to buy my potassium silicate in half-liter bottles from a specialty gardening supply place that's not too far from my machine shop, so that works out conveniently. This stuff is also available online if you can't find a local source for it. Sodium or potassium silicate are quite useful to have around if you're interested in doing your own uh, foundry work of any type and need to uh, make and maintain a foundry furnace of some sort. So let's get into uh, quickly making up a small batch of uh, do-it-yourself refractory cement just to show how quick and easily this is made when you have these two ingredients that I'm showing here. This is the rear of the baby powder bottle. 
where it lists the ingredients, it's got to have talc in it. Otherwise, it's not going to be any good. To make the do-it-yourself refractory cement, take some of the talc, much like I am here, put it in some kind of a plastic or metal mixing cup, then take your potassium silicate, mine is already in a liquid form, and just, uh, it's a very thick liquid, so it takes some time to pour. Pour some in on the talc, then grab a, something to stir with, and because the liquid is so thick, it's going to take a while to mix the extremely fine talc powder into the silicate, but I think, yes, we're starting to get to gooey here, and we've reached a uh, cement-like consistency in a few seconds. This that I have on my stirring rod here is a very high quality refractory cement that when it sets up It'll easily withstand the furnace temperatures needed to melt copper and brass. So if you can't buy it, or you don't want to buy a large amount of the store-bought refractory cement, you can make a very high quality one yourself from these two ingredients.